What happens when you let a bunch of psychopathic individuals loose on The Sims? Today, my £50,000 worth of debt as a result of my wasted psychology degree is finally coming into use because today we are talking about my two special interests, psychology and The Sims. So I discovered a research paper called Psychopathic Sims Testing the Cheetah Hawk Hypothesis in a Video Game, a fantastic study published by the on-screen authors where participants played The Sims 3 as a behavioural investigation into psychopathy and we'll be breaking down the title of it if you're confused. So what actually is psychopathy? The first thing that probably comes to your mind is serial killers. Although I can confirm courtesy of my wasted diploma, having a psychopathic personality does not make you a psychopathic murderous killer. That's not how it works. Psychopathy is not a formal diagnosis. It's more of a debated social construct that can describe people who lack empathy and remorse. Remorse. Think of psychopathy more so as a spectrum. Most of us do low level psychopathic things like ignoring a person's feelings so you can be petty and win in arguments, cheating at Monopoly, swatting a fly. So does drowning your sims in a pool make you a psychopath? No, before you freak out. As long as you know that hypothetically drowning a real human being in a pool is pretty sick. So go on, drown your sims, set them on fire, stab them in the guts, whatever Whatever you want to do. Again, looking at the title of the study, you might be wondering what the cheetah hawk theory of psychopathy is. According to this theory, people who lack empathy and remorse, aka psychopaths, also exhibit manipulative and exploitive behaviors, the cheetah, and aggressive and violent behaviors, the hawk, compared to non-psychopathic individuals who are less likely to be manipulative and aggressive. It's this theory that explains why your toxic ex cheated on you, but also had the audacity to manipulate you into thinking that they weren't cheating on you and was also kind of rude enough to then blame it on you, even though you did nothing wrong. Not that I'm talking from experience. It can also explain the toxic co-worker or like peer at school, the one that spreads rumors, tries to sabotage you or takes credit for somebody else's work. And according to this study, may explain why we all play The Sims a little bit differently. So why use The Sims 3 specifically to study human behavior? Why not any other video game? Well, other video games have been studied. GTA is an obvious one. Shooters, looking into violence in video games. Games like Minecraft, testing people's levels of creativity. And there is a link between personality and what you do in video games for sure. But The Sims is special. Unlike a game like GTA where you're forced down the path of being a criminal, The Sims gives you total freedom. You can do whatever you want. You can play as an evil Sim who works as a criminal, sure. You can be a stay at home mum who likes baking and looking after the family, also completely valid. The Sims is like a behavioural mirror and that's what makes the game truly so fascinating. So with that being said, The Sims is the perfect playground for investigating human behaviour. So the study in question, they actually got 205 individuals to play The Sims 3 and they had four pre-made characters. They had the cheater, a deceptive, sneaky, yet charming individual, the hawk, an aggressive, rude, and mean sim, the dove, a nervous, shy and gentle sim, and the cooperator, a nice, trusting and friendly team player. So during this study, they first actually had to figure out who's psychopathic and who's not. They basically would have given the participants a personality quiz, kind of like those Buzzfeed quizzes or a bit like the Myers-Briggs personality quizzes, but a little bit more official and accurate. And then they were basically allowed to play The Sims 3. And what did they find? Well, it may not shock you that people with high levels of psychopathy were more likely to do mean things. That's obvious. But more specifically, these kinds of individuals who typically lack remorse and empathy were more likely to play as the hawk character, the mean sim, and play as these sims in order to initiate the more horrible interactions. But what may or may not surprise you is that when playing as this Hawk Sim, the more psychopathic individuals actually tended to direct this mean behavior towards the kinder Sims, for example, the Dove. The study suggested that the kinds of people who tend to be aggressive and mean will typically also take advantage of other people's vulnerabilities and kindness. I mean, it makes sense what they found. School bullies never bully the popular kid, they bully the loser, the weak, the dorky kids. I would know. I was the, the bully, not the bully, by the way. Just 
just to confirm, even though I'm a bit of a bitch now. You know, the kind and sensitive people, they do always get walked over in life. It makes sense. The nice guy finishes last. And I think the study kind of emphasizes that. And I think it's interesting. So the whole kind of point of the study was to test, like, if you have the godlike power to control people like you would in The Sims, what would you end up doing? And needless to say, psychopathic people shouldn't really be the kinds of people you want in power, even though they typically are all of the people who are in power. And I find that really interesting because when you think of, you know, politicians, big business CEOs, most of these people score very highly on these psychopath personality tests. And these are the ones that do kind of play God and often make quite horrible decisions that affect people negatively. And I think this study really emphasizes that. Just to make it clear, if I haven't said already, how you play a video game does not dictate how you behave in real life. As I said, psychopathy is a spectrum. Most people can happily burn their sims to death knowing that they are not real humans, as it would obviously be a very different story if that did happen to a real human. But the implications of a study like this are really exciting. Can the sims be used as a tool to investigate human behavior? Ethically, it's a workaround because no real people are harmed in the making of whatever you want to do. Sims are not real, so unlike lab rats, we can ethically torture them or be very kind to them, depending on how you want to play. And that kind of thing can't really be replicated in real life in an ethical way. And given The Sims is a pretty accurate representation of life, it truly does make it an excellent platform to test these kinds of things, especially just given how open-ended The Sims is compared to any other video game. I mean, not The Sims 4, of course, because Sims 4 Sims lack a lot of personality. I don't think they would have been able to replicate this study in The Sims 4 because it's a lot more kind of vanilla, bland, and pushes you in a certain direction. I think if you were to do a study like this, then The Sims 2 would be an okay platform, but I would definitely say The Sims 3 is the best Sims game for doing any kind of psychological research like this, for sure. Maybe The Sims 4 would be okay with mods, but I think without, you definitely need The Sims 3 to do any psychological research on personality. Although to be balanced, it does raise an ethical question. Is it okay to draw assumptions about people based on a video game? Research already shows that playing violent video games does not make children more violent in real life. There is a huge dissociation between video game behavior and real life behavior. I mean, I've killed my Sims like over and over and over again. Real Real life me is Buddhist, okay? I hate suffering, it makes me sad, I cry all the time, I'm a big wuss and a cry baby, but somehow I find it enjoyable seeing what will happen if I try and make my sim booty crush another sim to death. Another extremely important point that I'd like to make is that video gaming can often express the opposite of who we are as opposed to the epitome of who we are. You know, on a personal level, I experienced a lot of anxiety around the pandemic time and I found the sims sort of really cozy distraction and I used to play this sim called Sophia and another sim called Alexander and I used to make them go on like adventures and stuff. We also had a servo robot in the household too that would come with us. It was very cute because I was just so like I really hate being locked up and having cabin fever. That was horrendous for me. So I made sims that were really adventurous and you know fun and just keeping it chilled which was the opposite of how I felt. I mean if we look back at the sims one when it first released all you could really do is go to work cook and clean in the game. It was pretty stripped back, yet people loved it. Why? Because real life is unpredictable, chaotic, and disorganized. The Sims brings the total opposite to that. A sense of consistency, a sense of normality, and I think that's how the game manages to somehow make the mundane feel enjoyable. With that being said, any study that draws assumptions about who you are based on the way you play a video game should always be taken with a grain of salt. Today, my question to you is, what would your Sims gameplay style say about you. For me, I would say, you know, my favorite Sims 3 pack was World Adventures. And you know, in school, I was the dove, okay? I was the fat blonde kid, if we're gonna go there, who didn't really have a social life. I was chronically online before being chronically online was even a thing. So I loved exploring and adventuring in The Sims, which I'd say reflected my inner need to bloom, to blossom, to go out and do things. Also, when I was going through puberty, but I didn't know what being gay was, but I 
I started having those feelings. Like I used to just make two men do it with each other all the time. I didn't really know even what woohooing was. I just always used to gravitate towards making two men do it. And now I know why. So as I said, you guys let me know how you play The Sims and why you think it reflects you or maybe doesn't reflect you at all in real life. I want to know. This video was very fun for me to research. So I will put the links to everything in the description below of the information that I looked at. And I very much encourage you to look at the full thing yourself. If you are curious, by the way, about the horrible, violent things you can do in The Sims 4, then feel free to take a look here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.